And I'm joined by our environment editor, Murray Dundas. Murray, this is rather complicated. Uh, could we start by talking about just what nuclear fusion actually is? actually being dubbed the world's most complex scientific endeavour. Complex because of the science behind nuclear fusion, but also getting all those countries to cooperate on such a large project. We're talking 20 billion euros in budget there. Because the project has a rather ambitious goal. It wants to replicate the reactions that are happening all the time in the sun and the stars in order to produce electricity. Nuclear fusion, what is it? Well, if you're scientifically inclined, it's about trapping hydrogen atoms uh, in a vacuum type vessel known as a tokamak, heating it up to 150 million degrees Celsius, that's 10 times the temperature at the core of the sun, um, forcing the nuclei to fuse, thus releasing vast amounts of energy. Now, this particular project, this ETA plant, is predicted to produce 500 megawatts of thermal energy. It's not uh, destined to become electric power as such, but if it were, it would be enough for 200 thousand homes. You mentioned net energy at the beginning. Why is that important? Because that's what makes it so promising. What net energy means is basically the power required uh, to produce this is actually less than the amount of power that's produced at the end. So you're not actually burning or using any power. OK, and all of this sounds to me like it might have some environmental advantages. Are we, are we looking at some carbon emissions reductions here? Well, that's right. Fusion power uh, is carbon free. It releases no CO2. But more than that, it doesn't release little to no radioactive waste, unlike nuclear fission, which is what happens in our nuclear reactors at the moment. Uh, you want more. Uh, if a reactor in a nuclear fusion plant breaks down, there's none of the risks that are associated with current nuclear power. And more than that, the fuel used for nuclear fusion is uh, seawater and lithium, both abundant on planet Earth, which is why advocates of this technology say that it promises virtually unlimited power for the indefinite future. So there's, there's some big hopes there. Indeed. Well, it's a hugely ambitious project and uh, the president touched on all those different countries that are involved in it. So hardly surprising, therefore, that there should have been a few, uh, a few bumps in the road, a few setbacks along the way. It's no understatement to say that it's been riddled with hurdles. It's well over budget. It is running late. They've actually had to lift the budget. Now they're saying they're within budget. If you lift the budget up, of course, you are within budget. At times, different countries have threatened to withdraw. And of course, there's still no guarantee that the technology will, will work. What today uh, was launched was the start of the assembly phase. It's expected to take five years. What we did see, though, with President Emmanuel Macron and those other leaders also commenting that the countries are on the sun page. They're willing to back this project a little further, of course, in this race to find a viable alternative to fossil fuels. OK, well, thank you very much indeed for that. Our environment editor, Marie Dundas. Thank you.